Jojalapai, everybody. Uh, I am Pramesh. So on behalf of all new organizers in USA chapter, I would like to welcome all of you in this today's uh, program. So this is the second episode of eHeritage that we are bringing out uh, on the floor of this Facebook platform uh, through the all new organizer, USA chapter. Um, I would like to welcome, yes, uh, our presenter, uh, Prazul Gurzu. So we have, uh, Prozul Ratna uh, who is really well known uh, in the United States as well as around the world. He has so many students and throughout the world, yes, uh, namely that uh, so many in the Eastern world as well as in the Western world too. And we are really uh, humble to have him in this platform. And he is part of the Old Neva, Unite, uh, Old Neva organization, USA chapter and he is a division director of the Heritage, uh, of the Heritage um, Division. So I'm giving the floor to uh, Mr. Prazul Ratna Vajracharya. So Prazul, yeah, I, I would like to welcome here and I'm, give, I'm floor is all yours now, please carry on. Okay, thank you, thank you, Pramis. Uh, this is a great opportunity always to share with little knowledge what I have. So. And, you know, it is wonderful to be in the platform for the World Newa, World Newa chapters in America. So I'm so happy. And so today's presentation is the Bihara. So, and then Pramish, uh, Pramish want me to talk more about the my Bihara in America. So, but I just don't want to just to talk directly about the my Bihara. I want to bring a little bit concept of the Bihara. What is the significance and what is the meanings and why we need the Bihara? So Bihara concept is it's very, very not, you know, thousands and thousands of years in the, in the Kathmandu Valley. It's been settled. It's been, it's been there in the thousands of years. Concept is the Bihara is just not just to, you know, oh, I want to build a way, I have a money. I want to build the Bihara. It's not the concept that way the Bihara is been. But Bihara is the spiritual, spiritual uh, connections with the spiritual connections and the spirituals uh, to settle in the spiritualities. And on top of that, like the, any activities you want to for like for your own mind, your own body, own your space to grow more and more. So when we think about the Bihara, Bihara is also the, uh, it's the, Courtyard, it is created courtyard. When you in the courtyard, means Bihara can be used for many, many different things. So for example, like the Bihara in the back in the old days, you know, they use as the uh, use, use as the monastery or use as the schools in a one side. And, and mostly Bihara is like a concept, like a how to train the people or how to uh, the trains from the foundations for the spirituality so they can be the loving kindness way they build the community in the in the area so that's the other regions and and then the, you you create the graduates and they have a different layers in the bihara like that they have a Nani Choka, you may hear about in Nepal. There's a, you know, according to my father's book, which is the Bihari Tata, he describes that we have in Kathmandu Valleys, it's almost 500 Biharas in Kathmandu Valley. And this is like, a, when you come to the present day of, of how that work in the systems, those Biharas like the, it's in that bit of the times, it is a school. It is a college. So once you get into the Chokon Nani, it is like a tiny schools. You train, train from there, then you come to the Bihara, and then you moving into the Mahabhara. Once you get into Mahabhara, you'll be into the master level. And then you get a master, it be complete, then you become Vajracharya. So then you can carry on to the Dharma. That's the concept in here. And also Bihara is also the, you know, that bit of the times, like the, it's people builds like the, you know, like when I come, when I myself, when I grew up in my life, it's the Bihara. 
you have a, all the natural, naturals, we don't have a toys. We have a, we create the natural toys to play. We don't need anybody's. And the parent doesn't need to be tickled all day, you know, like in right now in a, in a waste or in, even in Nepal, like you don't, you don't have a play game, play for the kids. And their environment they created with the art and, you know, every little pieces of the art, it is so important. So that's why it has been created that way. So you can, you know, uh, for like the and the humanity, for like the most important things of the humanity is to harmonious or harm with the harmony. You just building the harmony and you creating the foundations for your minds and body. So that's the other reasons. It is been in Nepal. It's been been thousands of years. And the first Bihara, it is called in Nepal. I don't know how many, it doesn't have a, we have a really evidence that way. But the Swainbu, the, you know, when the Manjushri cut the gourds, cut the water away, and then the, he have come with the disciple with the Prasanda, Prasanda Deva, and he was being initiated himself and he built the Swainbu domes in a Katunda Valley. And he created that Bihara, it's called that period of time, it's called Sammi Bihara. Sammi Bihara is Sammi the Samegu Mahabihara. This is known as Samegu Mahabihara. And then that Bihara is to create like a, this is the, you know, the when the Manjushri see the visions of the Vipashi Buddha who throw the seed in Kathmandu Valley. So it was like Vipashi Buddha throw the seed and the Vipashi Buddha already featuring this place is for the spiritual to grow. And then, you know, they build the Bihara and then that Bihara still exists and the Bihara is the monitor in the present day. And every Bihara have to be related with this Ame Bihara it's still, now it's like a Patans and Bhaktapurs and the Sakus and Kirtipur, they have a divided in the Malla period of the time. So now in only Kathmandu valleys, they also make it that in the Kathmandu Valley with Thani Bihara, Koni Bihara, Dattu Bihara. That means like a upstairs, up part of the uh, region, up part of the continent, how you call that, up part, down part, and middle part. They made it that in the uh, four, like a four different divisions in the, in within that four different division. And then they have a Mahabihara, we have a 18 of them among that. And and the, and subdivisions of the Bihara. So we have a uh, hundreds, hundreds of them in subdivisions of the Bihara. So those Bihara, as I say, like the when you need to, you know, back in the old days, there's no such a government schools, or you don't, I don't know how school is functioning in the Bihara. It's schools could functioning in the home school kind of. There's no. Uh, in the present day, it's a little slightly different than present day, that I can say. But it is the Bihara, is the train as the schools in the back in the old days. And then you, you know, gradually built. So the Bihara, it's also like the, um, how you call that? You know, when you create the foundations for your minds and the body, which is harmony, loving kindness, and a community oriented gathering together, all the different activities, all different uh, uh, community helpings with all everything you need to build with the community involved, then you can build in the fast than normally. And, and also that you are all in the spiritual uh, connections with this. And that is a help, help to our settles our minds and growing with that minds, it is, you can reach to the lots in the world. So that's why it's the community, you know, when you come to the Bihara or the Mahabihara, they are always like that they build more and more. They're always in the community. They always together, you know, anything they need to do. So that's the concept of the Bihara is to build your minds and body. So this is my temple. So it is the nine, uh, 11 years before first consecration we brought it 
to we you know we we finished these temples. We called the uh, Nitti Mandala Mahabhyara. So Nitti Mandala Mahabhyara's rise with the, the names from the my my institute. With we have an institute called Dance Mandala. That's also Sanskrit name is Nitti Mandala. So Nitti Mandala and a Dance Mandala is slightly different than how people think. Everybody thinks that it's my Nitti Mandala Mahabhyara is just for the dance, but it is not just for the dance. That is Nitti Mandala Mahabhyara. So nirte, nite, nate, those those that the three Sanskrit were, and it is, it becomes like a nirte. Not normally people say like, oh, it's a dance, but nirte coming from nate, nate, and nite. So nite means basically the every day you do the ritual. In a dance, it's a nirte. Uh, nir, uh, sorry. We call the charya nirti. So charya charya means daily practice, and nirti means every day you do. So back in the old days, that what they the concept of the charya nirti is like what you do for every day for a benefit for all sense and being, and what you do to grow your own things. So in when you when you say that things, it is come with that. You, to grow yourself, like a, you have to be meditation, you have to be practiced in the daily. So that's daily practice. It's, it's the became uh, the Charya Nirte. It's my views of the Charya Nirte is, is daily practice and whatever you do the daily practice, this, uh, this drive you into the spirituality and you grow more and that's way to go to enlightenment. So. This uh, Nirti Mandal Mahabhyara, it is came from that, you know, the root which like we created back in Nepal. So, and when you come to America, so my own history is about America, is I carry with my father's blessings, and the 1990s, I did 89 to 90, we went to the Japan to build the stupa in a in the Japan, in a Tokurinji, which is very famous uh, Buddhist uh, monk there, which is Takawaka. And he invited us to build, oh, somebody donated that stupa and they need to consecration. So my father did the consecrations in Nagoya. And my father kept talking that, wow, if you have a carry with this, the monument or this heritage, whatever, the represent as Nepal, because this is like a, Typical Newa, Newa or typical Nepali uh, traditions. So if we can carry this way into different parts of the world, or oh, what we have the art and the dharmas and the religious and music, whatever, if we can carry, it will be more appreciated in the other country and more honor. So my father was very honored to do the consecration stupa in the Japan. So. So, and then my father kept talking about, we, you know, this Bihara is going to be in Katunda Valley. It's completely dying. Not, not that much activities is happening. Only things is happening just to eat the food. There are parties, but not the spiritual orientation is happening. We need to create something that to, you know, with the, the create something that so people can carry and for next generation to next generation. And also the you know the the Bihar has been not been <clears throat> built into um, three hundred fifty years. The last Bihar has been built in three hundred fifty years. <laughs> in that sense, I'm not talking about like the uh, there's a there's a lots of Bihar which is the monk and nuns been building in Nepal, but the Bajracharya built with the Bajrayana connect and Bihar. It is built last time in 350 years. And since 350 years, never been built. So this is the Bihara after 350 years outside the Nepal. Also the outside the Nepal, there's not that much Biharas, which is connected to the Bajrayana. Now we have it in the, uh, in the uh, Lumbini as well, they recently built. 
So that's the concept. It's a came, and then when I come to America, so you know, it's a little bit challenging and a little bit difficult to life in the beginning to deal with this, and it's not happening that that easy to to build with this this. So my job is to teach. <clears throat> My job to teach uh, little dharma. So, and nobody knows what I'm, you know, doing in America. So I start to cooking food when I was teaching. And I have a tiny little apartment not far from here. And I was just like the I want to promote my art. Uh, my, I want to promote my, you know, what I carry is from my childhood. So I want to create that that to give share with everybody. So, and and nobody knows about the Nepal, nobody knows about my dance, nobody knows about the new, new uh, Buddhist, that dance, Buddhist karma. So I start to teaching the Dharma, I try to still teaching the dance, I start to, to cooking for everybody. That's why it's to bring the attraction more people's in. So, and then someday like someone came to study my dance, it's uh, like a surprise. Someone who been study, who been studies uh, in the Tibetans Dharma for the seven years. We've been monk for nuns for the seven years, and and they came to my my you know this dance class like uh, it is. It's unusual for them to see you know cooking the teachers cooking and teacher talking and making clean dishes, you know, I was surprised. And then, well, then in the meantime, like I was always going to Nepal to sew, you know, and then sew Nepal, uh, oh, tour Nepal. So whoever want to come with me, I just tour to Kathmandu Valley. So meantime, and also that lady, her name is Helen, she also came on my tour, and my tour is dedicated always in the Biharas and I see that how basically like the sad part of the the Biharas in the Kathmandu Valley. So there's no such Biharas have been really functioning properly, and that's why I want to create some things in that bring the concept of the Bihara and create it in America. And also that concept, also to bring that is so we can have a create a goody and a connect a goody and bring more more uh, social social group to create it. So, so first first times I went to it's about like a 2005 we went to Nepal, and 2005 is like a, we just looking for like a, what we can do, and second times I took it to her again, and. And that's it's, it's bring you more inspiration. Like wow, this is a, such a beautiful art of Nepal. We should bring it this. So, so, so then we started in the two thousand seven, uh, and thinking about that, and then we start to doing rishas more as much we can do the rishas. What we need to build the build the real bihara. So bihara to build, it's not a joke. It is take a, it's amazing, amazing. Uh, studies plus we don't want just to make it that uh, the Bihara just for the art to, to display. We want to bring it that authentic and the traditional and it's, it's how is that functioning and that way we try to bring it here. So, so um, the other concept is you know as soon as we start to talking that so uh, what will be easy way of making Bihara. So Bihara and then so we just searching searching for that. And then uh, Professor Dina Bangdels, uh, he, her uncle was, was there, which is the engineer who do, does design in a temple. So when we was talking to the Dina Bangdels, she's passed away right now. She's a great scholar. And so the Steve's like, oh, my uncles can make it for you. So this, you know, he just drove for like within two, two days. He just gave it, you should make it that way at temple. So this is the originals uh, drawing from that, uh, uh, his name, what is his name? I forgot his name. I've written in the book those days, all the history. So I forgot his name. 
in Pradhan. His name is Pradhan Pure. So he built it, and then and then we we came to in, the, in the here, and we have a engineer here, and who measure everything. And the same way we ordered all the wood carvings, what we needed for wood carving, and we built with this. So, and the co concept after the in the in the Biharas in the in the it's also the mind to train in the body. So you will look at this the picture, which is like a Bihara is like the your whole entire enlightened body is. So in like the to get the enlightenment to the body, so there's a need to train with our body, mind, and speech, basically. And there's a uh, body mind and speech in in the in the traditions. If you train your body, like the it's that the body have the many different uh, functions, which is you do all crazy things. Also, the in the meantime, you also can do the really enlightened things with the body. And the mind, it is the importance of the mind to train and also the speech. So in the Buddhist concept, it's if you train your body, speech, and mind, and that can completely transform your uh, we call make your liberations. And uh, when you come to the histories of the body, it means body, speech, and mind. Our, you know, when you think about the, our physical body, like uh, see what are we doing in, in the realities in this body. So with this, this body, if you don't have the, the, the consist in the, it, you know, like uh, there's the elements, if the, the five elements, there's a lots of different wisdoms in the, that five elements. If you don't connect it with that five elements, you may not be connected with this, you know, uh, connected to the spirituality and uh, grow your mind. So, and then minds like, uh, it's just amazing, amazing things, you know, like uh, if you look into the minds, there's no way to describe, there's no word to describe that. Like uh, there's uh, so many different things we need to be, what do you call, um, like, uh, the mind is because of the minds we are body is functioning because of this mind we are happenings so if you train the minds so you can connect it to the all sense and being that is the whole idea is about that and then the speech like how you speech it is in the in the tantras like you every word is so valuous and every word is the connection to the the, to the mind of the connections to the uh, deeper into the body. They also say that like a one word can be more tougher, tougher than the uh, knife. If you go to the knife, you can cut some part. It can be healed. But the word you say somebody, it may not be can heal. So they also they are like a this. If you if you cannot concentrate in your speech, and this is, will be harm other people. So we need to create it. We need to mind to train on that speech and make life it functioning. So they have a different layers in, a, in the part of the, the, you know, making in the temple. So, and uh, when you come to the, that, uh, that body mind speech, this also the, goes to the inner, outer, and the secret part. And uh, you know, the outer part is in the temple to create. We have what uh, they call the, we, we created here with the, the protector deities. And then so once you go to the inner part, we have uh, the, what we needed for our life to grow, like the meaningful way. So when we come to the inner part, we keep the more Buddhas and Bodhisattvas. And then when you go to the secret part, that is the cosmic inside the body. So that's also connected to the body, mind, and space. So this temples, it's connected to the, that way. And in the present days of this temple, so look this, and that we have it also the also the part of the temples, not just only build the, ten, the temples and a physical body, it have to be connected with the all different five elements is there. And so, so five elements there means like you are connected to those elements. So elements, you can see and feel it and, 
and experiencing with that. So that's the whole ideas about having. So that's why we have a, the lunity or the, the golden golden tap, with the water's water that's make you relax and calm. Then we have a air element is there, art elements is became as the temple. And then we have a uh, fire elements. So we that's what we do the everyday rituals in the morning ritual with the, the wick, burning the wick, incense burning. That's also the representing with that. So, and other part, the temple is also the, no different than the stupa also. So stupa, when you think about the stupa, there's many different layers. I mean, I should give more one, one day talk about only the stupa and how the stupa been functions in a layer after layer. So this, is, this element sometimes a little bit extensible. I don't know, people is exchange in a different way in the element. So this is our stupa in our temple. So there is a layer. We have a, we have a, uh, all the um, treasures, all the everything that we we buried in this 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 ground, and then we come through the top level. There's a the bodhisattva or protection level. Then we have a more treasures and more mandalas and more diamonds is all in buried in here this area, but this have a every significance in a layer. So stupa is also the, we call the mandala offering, this the five dimensions in the top. And those dimensions is the significance and meanings for our minds to body, to trains. So all the Buddha Dharma in, in the traditions was there to how you can train body, mind and speech. So same concept, it's also the, uh, the temple is also the, is like a cosmic mandala. So cosmic mandala is also the part of the stupa as well. So whatever you needed for the, the nutrition, whatever you needed for the, to keep the, the happy life, and that is, is in the bihara. So bihara is, you know, when you see in the above, like a, there's a, all different vessels and all different things, you know, this is like a, when, you, when you see uh, view from the over overalls from the above. How many things it's been buried? How many things have been there? So that's the concept. It's in the Bihara. So Bihara, but I don't know. I can talk all the details. So it's each corner in our Bihara. This is the each corner, with the out in inner circle in a corner and outer circle. So inner circles, it's this, and do we have outer circle? We have, a, I, I will show you that we buried the vessels and we have a vessels, uh, outer circle, which have a 10 vessel that they call the Dasamaha uh, Kuradi Devata, which is like a really wrathful deities and each wrathful deities does in a each different way of protection. And then when you come to the, the inner circle, it is more like the Buddhas and Tara. So in concept like a Swainbu, when you go to the Swainbu in Kathmandu Valley, so you see that it's in the east, west, north, south, they have a uh, Buddhas there and in a corner, they also have a Tara. So that is in there. And the middle center deities, it will be the middle part. So we keep, we build the, the Achobe and they give a life of the Achobe with all the doing rituals, lots of rituals in, in Nepal. Uh, when we did the uh, consecration, we have a, like almost two weeks and the groundings to give a life of the Buddha. So it's take you two weeks to, to build that. And we did it. So I will show you some pictures. So that's also does no different than paintings. So paintings, Stupa and the Bihara, it have a same concept. So they built with the, wherever the related deities is there, wherever connected the deity there as the mandala. So mandala also, uh, same ways like the, in a bihara, you keep in a centered deities that your deities will be, and then make the around with that. So history of Nepal, it's also the other part of the bihara is <clears throat> Nalanda Bisubhidale, which is considered that it's in the uh, 6th century and the 6th century is built. And from the 7th century, 
or maybe fifth century started this one. And the seventh century, it's from the seventh century to the, the uh, 12th century, they produce so many different masters in that. And then those masters, like a completely enlightened master, this, you know, Dharma, it's been flourishing in every part of the world in the present day because of the, those master. And those master, they built with this Bihara, <clears throat> Bihara. Uh, so <clears throat> the Bihara, as we say, Bihara is a functioning that way. So it is, uh, it is built gradually to get into enlightenment. So that is the concept of the Bihara is like a, the practice, study, and then, then you move forward into the, into the enlightenment. And so the, they were, when the concepts are built with that way, they have a, this, oh, sorry, I should put it in. Mm. Other way around, huh? I'm not the professional in the uh, fixing how to fix the computer part, but I should be turned other way around. This is the Nah Nalanda's. That's the this temples is the map of this temple. So, so if you look into the, this temple, they have a gradual build. Like the, every courtyard is a different level of studies. Things happening, and then once you get to gradually, you go into the in the top levels. And then, then you are get enlightened. So that's why they keep, you know, the like in in a Nepal, like a, they have a Toko, Nani, and then Bahi, and then Bihara, and the Mahat Bihara come. There's a many different layers, and that's when they the study group it's like you get together and practice the practice whatever is needed in that period of the time, and they try to get enlightenment. So that's what's happening. So this is the map up there. So this is our temples before we build it. I'm just go through it uh, fast with this one. So this is the, then it is, you know, the gradually start to creating with this, uh, whatever that, you know, wood and addings. And this is from the road side and the concept is built and layers built. Those the crew who has been, uh, this is the main guy, it's from Germany. Actually, he's, he is also the uh, one of my students in Nepal, uh, which I known from Nepal. And uh, when I came to um, the Portland, and then she just like, oh, she just run into it. She get to know. She study with Nepal. Then we are thinking about uh, building this. So, oh, my husband does this thing. So we hire and then made it this happen. And uh, here's a here's a Helen. She sees the one who created this temple and that's our crew other one is our crew so we're just having fun with this with this you know we're creating the multiple arms and multiple deities with this with that uh, our tools so and so he, they you know they are the people who build it so we keep it as it is you know gradually building and we have also radiant heat in the floor that's what we have in a temple and that's, it's dry. When you dry, it comes with the dry in a certain you know, pipeline with the hot water running. And it is gradually creating with this. Inside, so we'll be continuous, you know, seeing this in a layer. And this is then also the, you know, if you do the auspicious things, they always come with the, the uh, if you do the auspicious thing, they always with the, come with the, the disaster too. So we got a fire happens in the house and it all breakdowns completely. That's a fire start from the basement and then it is completely messed up whole house. And then we stopped for a whole years to not to do anything. So fires came from the basement of the house and but temple have a nothings and the really unusual things happen we have a sifted it's all the carvings from Nepal. And then those carvings, uh, carvings we are about to, um, what do you call? We are, uh, we are about to open the box and we haven't opened the box for the week or month. And then, and then one day my like, oh, I need to open the box, look what is, is there. So I just moved from that 
did this part, this part, and move to the other room. And that day it was fire and nothing touched with the, our carvings. It's a beautiful carving. So anyhow, then sort of, you know, it's all been damaged inside the house, but that's also the other benefit we have. Uh, and here, yeah. other benefit we have with this uh, having uh, fire is we have a many different way doorways we created in this house. So easy to access. And so now consecration time is comes. So the, this lady is our, also the students of our temple and also the artist. So when we needed like all the vessels to be painted, so she came and uh, volunteered to paint, paint this, uh, all the vessels. We have uh, many, many vessels in, in, you know, it's different vessels have uh, different characters. So that's what it is happening. And then the ritual preparations and uh, lots of ritual preparations. And that's with the you know, foundations for the Buddha, our Buddhist place. They have to be kept with the sword and the rope and the other thing. So, and then Kisli, that's at the other part. It's a very important uh, importance for the invocation for the deities. The Kisli is being really used. They usually keep top of that vessels and the, all the nectars inside with the five different nectars inside. And the priest from Nepal, which is Yegi Manpati, it was we, we buried there and each buried place he need to do the sadhana and invoke and then you know grounding the uh, the energy to there each each different place of each different mantras and each different connection with that so he did the grounding rituals with that way and that's why we have a temple here and this so this is the front front uh, front door. We have a, you know, if you, I mean, we can talk about all the this auspicious symbols and uh, why we need the auspicious symbol. Then what is the concept with this? So we have a, hmm, let's see again. So the whole concept of the temple is to the ideas about the temples. We have a. Uh, if you look into this, uh, every we have a sixteenth of sixteenth of them, and then every corners. We have a stretch here, which we call Toron. Um, so, so the idea is about that, like we have four different animals in a four different corners. So according to the Newar, Newar traditions and uh, temple history of Bihar history in Nepal. So they give you like the one animals with the dragons and dragon is represented that will be strong and will be powerful. And then, then the other animals will be the lion so will be the kingdoms of this area. So will be kingdom that we call became a Mahabhyara. And then when it is a steep, steep is considered that we don't harm anybody and we don't kill anybody. So that's kind of concept with that. We be quiet, we'll be staying quiet. And then other animal is called a bird. It's like we have built with the conscious mind so we can smell, so we can hear, we can see from far away. You can smell from far away. That is kind of concept is a bringing in a four different direction. And then for then all different corners, we have a 16 of them. Those are the 16 offering goddesses. And the main deity is the Sakyamuni Buddha. So that's, it is the temple. Uh, this is the other side, temple. And the, yeah, these corner, every corners in every part, they have to do the sadhana to build. And we have a inner part, uh, the grounds in the earth, we bury it in the here. And then the one is in the pinnacles in the Gajura. That's also the furthest spirit in the top. So that's, we did it. And then, so we have a day of the uh, process with that Buddha to honor. So we get, we, we gather all, we get together it's all in the park here. It's not far, it's about a two miles away from here, the park, and uh, we, the Buddhas need to be in the process. So then we made it this, this temple is a center. So we, we created like a three block in the part from this house. So we make the whole circle in this area in the three block with the musical, with the, the five Buddhas, with the process and you know, with the bangings, with that all, you know, we have hundreds of people are get together and joined in this process. So, and then the, those are the priests from Nepal with the Yegiman Pati, main priest, and also the Sugata uh, Bajrachari. 
So that's the Egeman's uh, disciple, Sugat Bajachari. So we uh, process with this, and that's a, we did the ritual. So we bring it to the temples, and then welcoming to the temple. And uh, this, in this process is a Jajamana is the Helen, Helen Appel. So that's the season one to, who donated this. So, so, so we have a, you know, and then we also have a, the, the Dayadai is chanting the Nama Sangiti, uh, you know, other different chantings in the same way. So, and we have a musical, you know, Supas and Brenda's and the Michael Strelling, who is the, also the music teacher here. They came to process and Alexander Rose Pot, professor from Berkeley University. He's also the part of our family, family, family connection to the family. So he's really connected to this temple. So we brought the Buddhas in and then made the ritual part. So ritual concept is really, really, uh, you know, uh, how you call that is? It's a, that's the Jajamana. So our Jajamana is there. And so in the, all day, all day, we have a rituals and the fire rituals inside the temples and buildings with the all different things in here. So uh, means one day I will just talk about the only the ritual part. This is called the Dusso Mandala, the cosmic mandala. So we just go through it that way. Uh, okay. So they every day it's the different, you know. So also that we, whatever we have a statues for the, uh, we need to, we, whatever we brought the statues, you know. So we also consecrated those, all the statues uh, around the here and the paintings and, the, you know, everything's what we have. So every little statues we have, it's been consecrated here. So, and, you know, consecration part is the dancings and blessings and all different things that's happening as always. It's a... I know it's just like a day, day after day. It's like a, you know, whole concept. Like a, it's it's the giving a life of the Buddha is like a, you give a birth first, and before you go to birth, you need to be pregnancy to be happen, and then so you you're growing inside, and then there's a process of the doing a ritual. Then, then you 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 are fully uh, fully ready for the bird and then it's a give a bird and then so you give the eye opening ceremonies and crown ceremonies and the, uh, so initiated initiated like a completely turning into completely enlightened so that's the process what we did it here so I give accounts and eyes blessings and uh, eye opening ceremonies the final one is the eye opening ceremony so give the crowns offering and then start with the blessing so uh, this is also the one of my mentor in America, Miranda Star, who brought me in to, um, she's the one who brought me to America and she's the one who introduced me into the, in, in America, in the Buddha Dharma. So Miranda was here too as well. So, and the inside part, so this is the main, the main entrance and this is the opposite. So I took the panorama view, <clears throat> panorama views for the temple. So. And then we have uh, all the dakinis in the top of there. We have a, according to Kathmandu Valley, we have a uh, five dakinis. It's in here. So the Saku was Saku Karga Yogini, uh, Bijeshwari Akasa Yogini, uh, Nairatma, Pasupati is Nairatma, and then uh, Bajra Yogini from the Parping. And the center is the Bajra Barai. It is considered, and we have uh, all the different deities in the, here in the Guacamole we call in Nepal, which is the pinnacle, tiny little pinnacles, which little deities in it there. And we have Manjushri, Buddhas, Lokeshwaras, Stars, and all different things. And then this is the main shrine. So main shrines is have a uh, the Ablokiteshra. We also have a uh, somebody donate with the Thai Buddhas is there in there, and that's the main shrine is uh, here with the Chabe Buddha. And we have a buzzer sutras and the tara in the, this corner, and then so also the when we had the consecrations, this is uh, the buzzer buzzra dipati sorry, 
which is the Bhadra Buddha, Bhadra Buddha, I don't know, I never seen it before in Nepal with a boat hand holding the Bhadra. This have to be consecrated. Then also the Atsala, it's the here. So those, the, those two deities is been built in the, in the uh, created with this. And that's with our library. So then also we created a library. The Helen, she, she collected so many books. And so we, we created a library and that library is dedicated to the uh, Helen's father. There's, she also he also donated. So, and also the, my father's connection with this. So we built it. So this is in such a panoramic view. So in our library, all rounds with the book. And we have a, quite a collections on the Nepal site also as well in the library. So then, oh, then we complete consecrate when the going to the top of the roof to pour uh, Yomari and Chatamari. That's what they did in the final ritual. So offering to Yomari and Chatamari in the final. And then now after we consecrate it, we need to do the daily rituals. So daily ritual, I just post on the Facebook and the YouTube. You may see that uh, what is the means of daily ritual. They have a very significant and very meaningful that the daily ritual. So you learn more about what is the meaning and the significance with the uh, rice offerings and incense offerings and flowers offering. Those are the symbolic. So that's daily rituals. We initiated, you know, and in a, in, in a temple since we established 11 years right now, and we haven't missed any single day to do the rituals in the evening and the morning ritual. So sometimes in the kids, we also train for the kids, you know, just to, for, 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 uh, they, for, for them, it's like a really fun for them. So that's what I can say. So we have a, all different rituals in the part, in the temples it's happened. So, and uh, so far we have a, in, in, in the, we have a, you know, all the mostly in Americans, or mostly in the local peoples in Portland, they doing rituals every day. So this is Russian. And then we have a lot of different activities that are happening in here, weddings and the birth abundance and the ehees and the whatever is needed to be in a, uh, you know, traditionally uh, in Nepal. So that's we functioning as, uh, and then we sometimes we have a uh, equinox and uh, the, the different uh, different um, different uh, different occasions and uh, different things we draw with the, the chalk and they keep the petals, flower petals, and create the real mandala. And we dance sometimes. We do different activities in here. Even we draw the the mantras in the each corner and keep the, all the petals in here. So our, also petal is a belong to the, the red and the blue, you know, there's a five Buddhist concept within there. So that's what we do. And this is the one of our consecration day of the ceremonies, flower decoration. This is also one of the equinox performance. We created the mandalas in the center. So, um, and then we do the dance. We have uh, lots of different activities in, in the every year it's chanting. And so other parts, my conclusions in here with like a, this courtyard, if you have it, I mean, you can do lots, lots of things. You don't know, need to worry about the traffic. You don't need to worry about anything. And then mostly people like in the courtyard, the parents are living in the, you know, houses like here. And then, we, you know, they can see easily, they can view easily, they can, what they're going and happening easily. So you just left them for play with the nature, play with, you know, before they didn't have the stones here. So now, you know, basically they're playing with the mud and, you know, in the, in the practice of the Dharma. So, and so, you know, there's a lots of different, you know, hundred, you know, five hundred temples in Nepal. So there's all different activities you can see in courtyard. They mean you know, training for the kids, training for the, you know, all different practices, esoteric practice, you know, those things will be happening. In so any activities can be possible, and that's what's my. I'm growing up with those, those bihara. This is my bihara. Uh, 
now it's not more not, not anymore like this it doesn't have that any view like this anymore it's completely different and this is became a casa bazaar which is like an all house been tear downs and brand new houses and then everything like a completely full of the motorbike and the bazaar is everywhere this is became the turning to a restaurant this became the turning to the store so those bihara is became that way and recently i went to nepal i just did the rituals uh in time of my time so and now it's you know this is the early morning in a saturday so there's no motorbike but it completely changed in this bihara so it used to be this bihara like this now it's changing to a completely different so that's why it grew up in my whole life and my spiritual practice it's happening in this life so this is called the mantra city mahabhyara and so bihara every bihara as you can see that's all different functions in the different power so this is we call the mantra city mahabhyara mantra city mahabhyara very, very unique it's it's it built in the 20 uh, 2200 years before and then the history has been carried on to the still in the present day one of the person this built this stupa and then and then this is the asoka stupa they call normally and then someone one person thinking that well we we don't have a matching stupa let's create it and creating the when he built it he also cover and it builds like a, the twin stupa they're thinking about a twin stupa to build and then as soon as they built completed and then he died he passed away so then they don't need to do they don't do any things with that they leave it as it is so this one stupa is considered the osoko stupa osoko is in the third century he came there and he, you know in the Kathmandu valley you may see that many many osoko stupa in a in the Kathmandu valley so so those places it's very highly practiced in the spirituality in back in the old days and my bihara where i grew up so the, this person is it is like a really tantric hero in a, in a, in nepal in that period of times and he also created the tunicals with the mahakala temples in the tunicals and also he is the constitutor who brought the uh, what's called chandramara sona in the uh, in the tebala he also created that Chandramara Sana. And some people have a different views. Like uh, some people say that the Bandhu Datta is uh, created. I don't know, history can be, the, there's no such a true history, but it is considered that this uh, Bihara's, founder of this Bihara, who also brought the Mahakala in the temples, in Mahakala and Bhadrakali. That's why we have associated within the, our history back in Nepal, mostly the uh, member of this Mahabhyara is the priest, priest uh, take care that Mahakala and Bhadrakali. So we still practice, uh, esoteric practice in the Bhadrakali is still in the present day. And uh, every night, like once, once a year, we have a, a big night and then we do the fire rituals and the singing and dancing all night in the secretly only allowed for the initiated peoples in that area. So that's the, so, so my conclusion is to have this the Bihara is really important for the, for, for the, not only for the, for the spiritual oriented, but also the, it is good for the, to foundations to create. If you create the foundations in your body with like a harmony, loving kindness, friendly, to hold support, then your mind is like at a really peaceful. You create it. That's why those bihara is the place for those to grow, grows to grow. You know, that's why bihara. Like once you have a little bihara, anywhere you can create that bihara, it will be benefit for the many many generations. It will be carried on with many many generations can build with the spirituality. So that's why it's in our Bihara. What we do is here, we have a hundreds of, you know, every years, like a hundreds, because of pandemic, we don't have that much activity. Almost in every, uh, every year, we have hundreds of activities. And we have so many uh, great masters came into our temple. And the highest master, like the Dalai Lama's personal translator, uh, came here, as well as 
Dalai Lama's previous teacher, his reincarnation was an inheritor. And beside that, we have uh, so many scholars and so many uh, great teachers we've been hosting in the past 10 years. So it's just to have that as the space and uh, you know, making functioning so all different activities, it helps to grow. So that's my Bihara. Bihara is like the university. Bihara is the growing to getting the master levels. And then once you're in the master level, there also the concept in Nepal, we have a 18 Bihara. Many people have a different views in 18 Bihara. Some people said a different, you know, after Buddha passed away, they have a different mind set up. So they may go in a different way. But my my feeling is like, a, once you have in a master's, uh, once you have a master, once you have an enlightened, they go to a different place and they start to teaching. It's like the same here in the you know, Western world. Once you get a master, you go you know, somewhere else and doing the PhD, doing practice, whatever you're doing. So same concept in Nepal, the Sangu Bihara is the, Bihara has been created in the thousands of years before. And then it is then when they get the masters, masters or the enlightened from there, then they move to the other other days and they creating own group. It's like in the present day of the school, how many schools in the Kathmandu Valley? So they start building the school and creating some more and more schools. And that's where it is in the Bihara concept to like the highest education. So education is to drive you into the enlightenment. And that's one of the degree you carry, it's in a piece of paper. They, they literally train you in your body, mind, and speech. So you can be enlightened, you can be helping physically, mentally, healthy, however you can help to the others. That's the way it's being helping. So that's the I have to say today. So thank you. And uh, I didn't go to the detail. I should maybe, I don't know, in future, I should be more penetrating than detail. So I just want to see how you know, Bihara, you know, monitors in the functionings in a Bihara. There's lots of things to say. So I will stop here. And if anybody have any questions, please let me know. Thank you, President Gurzo. Uh, isn't it amazing that, yes, how, yes, he has shared the stories, the journey that, yes, he has started in the United States and how he was so determined and uh, how he has been supported by all the communities, uh, non nepal communities, non nepalese communities, right? So, I mean, uh, I'm not getting the words, exact words, when he was sharing all these, yes, uh, the visualizing all these processes as it went through. So, thank you so much, Prasul Gurju. So, we would like to, yes, uh, start the Q&A session. If anybody has any questions that you can unmute it. And uh, to the audiences that we would like to let you know that if you also like to just participate in this and you would also like to come and join us in the Zoom that you can just text us or you can, uh, you can send in the comment box or you can just PM me or DM me or you can just do the Prozor Gurja as well. So from the yes, the today's participant, if you guys have any questions that I would like to open the floor, please unmute yourself and please go ahead. I have a Hi. small question. I, I first of all, I feel very touching uh, on this um, sharing and especially the history of building the Mahabharata in Portland. And I have uh, one small question that is, uh, my student asked me, why, because um, the Buddha, the statues in, in China, we always see that in golden color. <laughs> why in, in your uh, Mahabharata, the, the statues of Buddha is in black color? Well, the history is... History, it's like when you look into the Buddhas, Buddhas, the Buddhas trains his bodies and mind from his, uh, from his mind, it's like the closing eyes or the focusing in one little thing, you know, like the halfway closed eyes. So basically Buddha will see all the emptiness. The Buddha nature is about emptiness. Emptiness is from the darkness. So darkness is the emptiness. But in the, you know, 
uh, present day that people start making a golden. Golden is also the represents as the the emptiness. They, they, they you know they, you can take it in two different ways. So idea is like a, the the uh, organic and the gradual is like a dark part, but the other parts like the signing the golden like a signing and the illuminating is the gold part. And also the gold is even like a tiny dust, it's always in the goal. So essence of the energy, it is always keeping as it is, it doesn't going to dissolve. That's the goal symbol. So people use in the use in a certain in a certain continent, I mean different part of the world in a different views, way, different way of using. But Nepal, it means now it's they start painting gold too in the present day. But mostly that they don't want to be keep it, you know gold there, they want to show that is when you see in the dark and a see in the gaze with the dark, it's just happenings. You now, because of the, the Buddhist teachings about uh, from the darkness to illuminate from the darkness or clear, clear of the darkness. That's what is the Buddha did it. So that's why Buddha has been the organic way of we creating the Buddha statues as dark. Yeah. Thank you. Good, good. Okay, so uh, that's all we will. Well, uh, thank you for attending and thank you for joining. So uh, we'll keep in touch in the next, next, next times. And so thank you. Any questions with that? Good. Okay. That's all. Yeah, we should stop. I'll, uh, yes, President Gurdjieff. So we are, thank you so much for your uh, time and as well as the knowledge that you have shared today and especially right, um, how you have given us the idea how it was started and how it is growing. And uh, with that on note that uh, we can uh, we are really fortunate to have you with us. And uh, so thank you so much for all the yes participants today. And uh, we have the participants from so many places and as well the audiences in the Facebook live. And uh, at the end, once again, that I thank you, Brazil Gurju, uh, for the yes this uh, time, his time. And uh, we, are, we will be yes again uh, we are trying to do once a month. So please stay tuned with us uh, through the Facebook that we are linking. And we will be announcing in the Facebook uh, that when would be our the next one. So normally we would like to, we we'll try to keep it in the first Saturday of the each month. So we'll try our best. So till then, um, on behalf of uh, when you organizing USA chapter, I thank you all once again, and till then, Goodbye. Good. See you, Good to see. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, keep in touch.